Hello and welcome back to Genesis Designs and Model Craft and today I have another quick look review for you all and today's subject is this. This is of course the brand new or newly released Airfix Buccaneer in 48th. Now this is the latest one which is the Royal Air Force version clearly and it's slinky wraparound camo there. Uh, I've not seen this kit in the flesh yet, either built or in the plastic. Um, I have had a very quick look at the parts inside before I came on air, uh, but I've not opened the bags yet. And here's what you get when you open. It's a pretty, it's a huge box. I don't know if you can tell from the fact that it very much doesn't fit under the camera, but it's a great big box. Um, and if you buy it, it may already be too late, I don't know, but if you buy it off the air directly from the Airfix website right now, you do get this challenge coin included, which features the 12 Squadron motto, the fox up there, uh, and it's got XW527 on it. That's all in relief. This is number 305 of 500. Uh, and on the reverse is this beautifully enamelled. Yeah, fix logo. It's very, very nice. Comes in a standard challenge coin tub. I don't need it, but this, this model will be built for a good friend of mine who served on 12 Squadron on Buccaneers as an armourer. So that's why I've got it. So without further ado, adieu. Shall we start looking at these magnificent spruces? Let's get some the obligatory plastic rattling sounds going. I do love the Buccaneer. It, it, it's just such a goofy looking aeroplane. Um, I have, I did build the old, the old Airfix 48th kit way back in the day. Um, and, and in all honesty, it's a half decent kit. It's, it used to have a bad reputation for not fitting together well, mostly because of plastic warping, but in fairness, if it was approached with patience and care, it was actually perfectly all right. Um, and yeah, growing up as I did in Spalding in Lincolnshire, in the Fens here in the UK, um, I was within a few moments flying time of the low level flying area and, and the bombing ranges at Hole Beach on, in the marshes. So I used to see these things blatting about and I clearly remember seeing them in golf Golf colours when they came back from Iraq as well. These and Jaguars and Harriers and Tornadoes and Vulcans and Victors and absolutely everything. Brilliant place to live at that time. All you see nowadays is, uh, is F-15s. But hey-ho, anyway, let's get on with this, shall we? This is Sprue A. Again, it's quite large. Uh, and clearly, this contains the fuselage parts in essence. And... Um, yeah, straight away, they look really nice. The general feel of the finish and the way the surface detail is done does remind me a lot, actually, of Kinetic. Whether people see that as a good thing or not is up to them. But it does have that feel about it. It's a slightly rough texture on the surfaces, as is seemingly the case normally with Airfix. It's rougher in some places than others, but surface detail has got that very soft quality a very slightly soft sort of crispness if that makes sense i did demonstrate on the seeking review how that can be dramatically improved simply by the addition of a little bit of rubbing down here's the underneath with a really <laughs> beautifully done bombay i mean this is airfix everyone Raised detail there, it's your noses. They've got some raised panel work on them as well. An open air brake. That's got both raised and recessed rivet detail on it. Sides of the intakes and then you've got your tails. Yeah, they look very, very nice. Very nice surface details. It's just right. I predict that when likely primed and then sanded back, as per the said demonstration in the seeking video, this will look cracking, absolutely cracking. And, you, and it will need to be rubbed down because of these 
slightly rough areas like here for example you can actually see the difference in the finish it's a little bit rough the other thing I've noticed just quickly the, the kit for some reason Airfix have decided that people might want to um, model it with an engine showing so this area here sports a plethora of dots which you're supposed to chain drill the idea is according to the instructions that you chain drill through these holes and then cut this panel out to show some engine detail but unfortunately that has telegraphed to the well the sprue is so big I can't get this under the camera it's telegraphed to the external surface I'm hoping I've got that lined up right but uh, you can see a load of sort of blemishes and they're slightly proud I can feel them and I can see them and I think because this plastic is so thin there's also a flow mark going right across that which is making a slight crease which will also need to be sawed so I think to to deal with this I'm going to have to add some super glue and talc probably from the back to fill these holes back up again otherwise it's quite likely that I'll break break through that plastic where it's so thin nothing major it's just things you need to look out for and uh, if if looked at and dealt dealt with early on they'll never be a problem okay sprue B again it's large here we've got intakes I presume here bulkheads and bits and pieces of detail for the front and rear faces of the engines the aforementioned engine detail option some pilots um, they're a little bit soft shall we say I mean yeah, they're kind of blobby I don't think many people will want to use those uh, different options at the, over here I'll flip the sprue over for the, the air brake cones I'm going to assume that this is going to be sort of open and closed options and some other sort of various bits and pieces of, of bulkheads and, and what have you no majorly obvious moulding issues here the surface detail on these tail cones does look to be similar to that on the fuselage and there's some also some of a nice detail for those internal areas so that's the first bag second bag equally massive sprue and exceptionally large bags oh there we go H and G and F not my border skew we'll go with F first I do like the fact that Airfix have taken to using the uh, Bandai, Bandai style of sprue labelling, nice and easy to see. This is armament, clearly. We have, um, just looking at it with my non armour eyes, we've got which what I think are sea eagles, probably. Sea eagle missiles. There seem to be quite a few of those, probably four. Uh, we've got it's an insert for the underneath of the tail. We've got a GBU here. Looks to be one of the slightly smaller versions. That's the other half. An A9. Is this probably a PCM pod, perhaps? Uh, uh, yes, pods are over here. Uh, the fuel tanks and nice little sort of slipper tanks that the Buccaneer had. Uh, and the Bombay cover the door. The Buccaneer had a rotary Bombay. He fit quite a lot, lot of weaponry internally on it, which isn't well. I say it wasn't a thing on your aircraft, but it's coming back into fashion, isn't it, with the F-35 and stealth. So that was um, that was F. 
So G then. A bit more of a sensibly sized sprue. Undercarriage legs, clearly. Great beefy undercarriage, strong carrier aircraft undercarriage legs. Wheels. Uh, the mm, the tyres have a weighted effect. However, I think they look a little bit silly because the way it's been moulded has, has led to a sort of a crease effect. You can see it there across the tyre, which looks... It just looks wrong. Um, if you've got creases like that on a line aircraft, you've got US tyres, basically. Uh, it should be a nice, smooth, minimal bulge. Uh, so that's not great, and it would be difficult to clean up. Undercarriage doors look phenomenal. Those are beautiful. Absolutely glorious detail on the inside of those. And no ejector pin marks. Well done, Airfix. Moving across this side, you've got a similar weird crease effect on the nose wheel. Clearly the nose wheel is or should be weighted, but equally clearly probably not to the extent of the mains. Combing for the cockpit and then a, a, a multitude of parts for ejection seats. I'm unsure why there appear to be three, but maybe the instructions will make that clear because they do appear to be identical. The little known three seat variant. And then over this end, there's just a load of separate little panels. So you've got, obviously you've got instrument panels there, but loads and loads of separate little sort of console panels and what have you. For the cockpit area. There's a quick look at the seat detail. And the undercarriage legs. And here we have sprue H. This one, slightly nondescript parts on initial inspection, but you've basically you've got bungs and blanks, so intake and exhaust blanks, which is a nice touch. Any any aircraft honestly but particularly fast jets when they're on the ground for any length of time at all they have bungs and blanks fitted so they have pitot probe covers they have static port covers they have intake and exhaust blanks it's to stop creatures getting into things and it's to stop the weather getting into things and it's just not it's just not optional they aren't left outside without covers on them so it's nice that a manufacturer is finally including things like that as a matter of course Run over. Okay, we've also got ladders, or oh, an ladder. Some really nicely moulded pitots and aerials over here. Various sort of bullet fairings, bits and pieces I can see there. And all these tubes and pipes, I think, are for the Bombay area. Piece here that says mask. This is um, for the where you cut the engine out. I have had a quick flick through the instructions clearly. This is for covering up where if you were to cut out for, for the engine, this is to put back in. And the nose gear door here is equally as nice as the mains. Absolutely lovely stuff. A lot of parts and quite a lot of detail by the looks of it. Okay, the last big bag. Literally use these as bin bags, they're so big. Final two main sprues, which are C and D. Sprue C, wings. Got wing parts there, ouch. Um, and control surfaces and hinge pieces. So, tailplane, main wings. We've got moulded in vortex generators along the upper surface here, which actually look quite quite fine and quite nice and again very very nice surface detail throughout it's much finer on initial inspection than the surface detail on the seeking or indeed the big spitfire that I'm working on 
much finer. As I say, very, very reminiscent of Kinetic actually. Got control surfaces there. Here are some sections for the wing fold area, should you choose to have the wings folded. You could argue that Royal Air Force aircraft would not have the wings folded, but I'm sure they did on occasion. Uh, some strengthening parts. Here's your refuel probe, quite a prominent part of the Buccaneer. And the only obvious problem I can see with these, oh, there's a, potentially a couple actually, but the, this wing panel here is quite badly warped. Put that at an angle. Well, it's got a horrible buckle in it. It's supposed to look like that one. These parts are flexible and I do expect that this will be able to be pushed back into shape when it's glued to its counterpart. But the problem with this kind of thing when it's moulded like this, it's obviously been pulled out of the mould a bit too firmly, um, or sort of handled like this while it was still hot, it's it's the parts sometimes have a stretch to them, so when you push it back down, they just don't quite sit right. Um, and one solution with things like that, if necessary, would be to dunk the part in hot water, you know, sort of very hot tap water, for a few moments to get it warm, and then just try and gently massage it back into the right shape using the other half as a guide. Um, but looking at the insides, ouch. Same is true of the tail planes, actually very true of the tail planes. We've got some really sporty ejector pin scars here. Look at this. Trip over this one. Massive. Now those will, without any doubt, interfere with the fit of these parts, the tail planes in particular. There's absolutely no way these are going to fit together properly without all of these ejector parts being scraped and sanded back smooth. I suspect there's a, there's, a, there's a likelihood that these will also interfere slightly. Again, it isn't a big deal. It's easy to sort out, but it's one of those things that if you don't think about it, if you don't look at the parts uh, and prep them ahead of time, and you go and put glue on it and then try and put it together, and you'll find there's gaps and it doesn't work and you just get into a mess. Got the same issues on these control surfaces as well. That'll all need cleaning up before you try to glue it together. But better that it's on the inside than on the outside, obviously. I've also got warps on both of these thinner. I think this is the lower surface of the sort of flapper on both bent. <clears throat> and the final major grey screw D uh, more weapons more missiles bunch of bombs look like standard thousand pounders to me slipper tank parts, pylon parts or a big bomb perhaps down here near the D don't know I'll go through the instructions shortly and we'll, we'll figure that out And the actual last plastic parts are the transparencies. Now this bag's rattling, but it looks like it's just one of those sprue blobs rattling around. This bag was inside the first main sprue pack that we opened, so it's not completely separate. It is separately bagged, but it's in another bag. Let's just get that gone. Remember not to let your babies play with these bags. Okay, canopies. What do we have here? Quite a lot of lamp lenses. This is the internal windscreen that goes in front of the rear crewman. Um, potentially wing tips, I guess. Two different windscreens. Like the Sea King, you've got a moulded in windscreen wiper or a windscreen without a windscreen wiper. This gives you the option of A, not having to worry about masking around that, or B, being able to fit an aftermarket or photo or scratch built wiper without, without first having to remove the moulded in one. It's another nice touch which I do approve of. 
and then two main canopies one has molded in MDC cords you can see them there and the other does not and again I expect this is to allow the option of a scratch built or photo etched or decal addition both of these main canopies are sporting some fairly advanced distortion particularly the one with this molded in it's the kind of thing that's very very difficult to get through on video but if I just hold that still and just gently move it should be able to pick up on that distortion. This one is nowhere near as bad, but it, it is there. Windscreens are pretty good. But very comprehensive. There's a lot of lamp lenses and ident lights and things there as well. I think I already said that. All right, plastic parts done and dusted. Only 20 minutes, good stuff. So, last up in the bottom of the box. Instructions, etc. Now, I'll start with the instructions and we'll go on to the decals and the colour sheets. My instructions are ripped. I don't know how or why, but I'm already broken. It doesn't really matter to me. But I know that kind of thing can irritate some. Standard stuff then, it, it's an A4 printed paper booklet, it is in colour but it's not shiny paper. You do have your little piece of info about the Blackburn Buccaneer there, with its data plate type thing going on. Multiple languages, a little bit about how to use instructions and there's your assembly icon instructions with a quick gander to familiarise yourself with those because they don't necessarily map across to all the other manufacturers and now we're back here with the Sea King that I reviewed a short while ago I haven't done any reviews of airfix kits in a while leading up to the Sea King I don't think but this is a new thing where straight away we're talking about the options before you even start the build and I again fully approve of this move by Airfix because the, and the seeking is a case in point there are so many different things that you need to drill out or not drill out or change or different parts that you need to use with the different options within that kit that it's something you do need to plan for right from the off and by, by laying out the instructions in this way Airfix are encouraging the modeler to think like that so this is telling you for the A scheme, you need to drill out all these holes. Well, only if you want to fit weapons and pylons, obviously. But you don't have to with the Buccaneer. Down here, there's a note saying, do remember to apply the underwing decals before you attach the pylons and weapons. Well, thank you. That's a handy tip. And we've got the same thing for the B scheme, the C scheme different layouts of holes for each one and of course the D. Then there's a whole bunch of instructions about where to fit the decals on the internal parts so all these instrument panels even the seats have got decals and this is showing you where they all fit so rather than cl cluttering up the individual assembly steps with this information it's held in a separate place and after that so several pages in already we finally actually start building the thing and initially by building two ejection seats there's no mention there of the third set of moldings so i'm assuming that one of those three is actually slightly different and i just didn't notice we do get a decal for the seat belts here not shown on this this drawing but there is a decal for them we'll, we'll see that in a minute with two seats made we move on then to building some instrument panels and indeed the cockpit tub and you can see here all these separate little pieces that go to making all of that up and as I said there's no information here about the decals you need to refer back to this. Still going, rear bulkhead adding the seats and then we've got this as per the Vulcan 
separate internal nose cone to put all the weight inside. Not really necessary, I guess, but it, again, at the same time, it, it is quite a nice touch, I think. 15 grams, it says, which is not that much. Then moving on to the internals of the actual nose area, again, with the separate little pieces being popped on everywhere. Ladders. If you're going to fit crew ladders, remember to drill some holes. And then we're going to finally add the cockpit itself, put the two fuselage halves together, and then instrument combing goes on last of all. So you've got a completely finished nose unit there. From there, we're going to, moving on to the uh, sort of backbone of the aircraft in effect is this unit that you put together, including the sort of intakes and the various bulkheads. It all builds together, it's quite a substantial assembly by the looks of it, but includes the main undercarriage bays and as I say both intakes, but also this sort of strong backbone piece. And you end up with this. That then gets glued into the lower fuselage half. Now because the bomb is moulded integrally with this, this is pretty strong assembly anyway, so this is maybe overkill, but it's nice it's nice to have it. Um Fill these, it says, doesn't say why, it just says to fill them. Let's have a look, what's that? Right, it says file it and fill it, so smooth these off, whatever these are. Doesn't, oh yeah, and the, and the panel. That they're attached to all that needs to be gotten rid of so that's all the back 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 end of the engines now this is the front intakes um, this engine piece is here for for the detail area should you choose to cut it out which it's going to go on to on the next page Note, build steps 40 to 43, even if building the model with the engine cover closed, it helps with correct alignment. Makes sense. Miss out steps 44 to 47 if building the model with the engine cover closed. So that's just adding some of this pipework detail to that exposed engine area. There is the mask panel that we spoke of before. And here it is showing you about drilling out all these one millimeter one millimeter holes to make cutting that panel out easy. So you drill all the holes, then you connect the dots effectively with a scalpel, and then you'll need to sand or file the edges smooth and straight. Incidentally, if that was a wanted option, but you didn't feel that the provided detail was really up to snuff. Um, black dog do a, a suite of resin parts for this kit including um, some fully detailed engine areas uh, and avionics base as well here we're talking about folded wings if you want folded wings you need to add these pieces if you don't then obviously miss them out please delete one of the vortex generators So yeah, use some care following this area. Just make sure to use the right pieces for the variant you want, if you want the wings folded or not. Um, do partake in test fitting and checking because, you know, removing something like this, if you've fitted it in error, is going to be awkward. <clears throat> Carrying on with that. So here it's showing to fit uh, your completed wing parts into the lower fuselage here before adding the top one. Again I would recommend solid test fitting before, before doing this. I, I am sure it will work. Airfix do this a lot nowadays but and every time I've I've built one it's been fine but just check.
Then we add the tail and the nose. And now it's starting to get big. <laughs> if these wings fitted well enough, it would be nice to not have to fit them until later or even after painting to a degree to, to enable handling of the modeling model to be a lot easier. It is quite a large aircraft, quite a big model. Intake, external parts of the intakes going on there and indeed the exhaust. And then all the control surfaces, the back part of the wing. Tire planes, air brakes again, really exciting air brakes on this thing. You can obviously have those deployed or not. Then building up the bomb bay itself. Uh, the addition of sort of bulkhead pieces and a load of sort of tubes and wires and bits and pieces make that look quite busy. Or just fit the cover and don't do any of it. Then moving on to the undercarriage parts, all of which are moulded in halves, presumably to avoid sort of sink marks and blobbiness uh, because they are quite thick not quite large parts um, interestingly though to me anyway there's a very clear on the main legs in particular there's a very clear molded internal area which I did wonder if that if there'd be another part included to provide stiffening to that which would make sense to me as it is a large and heavy model but there are no such parts in fills in the kit however it would make it very easy for the modeler to build their own using some sort of brass tube or some such you could make something which did fit in there which would just provide a bit more stiffness to those parts And fitting said on the carriage and then we're moving into the minutiae here really you've got um, various wingtip lights okay we've got two different options of wingtip wing tip shape arrestor hook aerials and pitots and such pilots should you wish to use them and various glazings so you can fit the canopy in the open position fairly unusually for a modern, well, a jet aircraft, it does have a sliding back canopy. And weapons, okay, so Sea Eagle times four. The bombs, it doesn't tell you what they are, but I do believe these are 1,000 pounders. Fuel tanks, Sidewinder. Paveway 2, the £10,000 according to that, I, just, I think it's actually a £1,000. And then the two pods, which again it doesn't name. I'm not enough of a nerd to know what they are, I think that's a 101 but I don't know what that one is. Ladders, should you wish to include them, uh, the bungs and blanks are shown here as well. And there's your sort of final... Popping the wings on if you've gone for the folded version. Then, stencils. Oh my days. Pauses for effect. Look at that. Alright, this is for scheme A. This one is for scheme B. This one is for scheme C. That is an unbelievably comprehensive set of instructions each of the four scheme four schemes included has a separate stencil data position list for those of you with an aversion of to stencils like myself uh, scheme d appears to be the one to go for as it literally doesn't have any yes approved right there you go okay so that's the instructions it's quite a Quite a weighty time, actually. Cool. 
colour schemes starting with alpha separate fold out glossy in colour very very nice uh, this is for XW527 number 12 squadron RF Lossiemouth Scotland 1993 in the ubiquitous wrap around dark green and dark sea grey camo absolutely love this scheme there's nothing that looks bad with this on it C130Ks, Vulcans, Victors, everything. They look brilliant in wraparound. Just my opinion, but I'm right. This is the one I will be doing. <coughs> B, 15 Squadron, RF Larbrook, Germany, 71. A slightly earlier scheme with the light, light aircraft grey under surfaces and the three colour roundels. Talking to a friend last night and I... I just don't like this scheme on the Buccaneer. I don't know why. I think it looks fine on Phantoms. I like it on early Harriers. Just don't think it looks great on the Buccaneer. That's scheme B. C. 208 Squadron Red Flag 77. So this had a temporary uh, desert style scheme. Listed as Pale Stone and Dark Earth applied over top of the scheme it was wearing underneath which was the earlier light uh, light aircraft grey underside but the back part has been left in its original camo i don't know why but i'm going to assume it's something to do with e exhaust issues <laughs> probably i don't know i'm making it up uh interesting though and i think probably the only time you're going to see a buccaneer in a desert scheme a red star on the nose. I don't know if it was meant to be an adversary or something. And finally, Guinness Girl, Hot Granby, uh, Bahrain in 91, obviously desert pink, which would have been over the wraparound camo. Now this actual aircraft currently resides at the RAF Museum in Hendon, or at Hendon in London. Uh, it's possible to get very close to it. It's got steps leading up to the cockpit so you can see the top of it. Um, and most interestingly of all, it has been left alone. It hasn't been cleaned. It hasn't been over painted. It hasn't been messed with. It is as it was when it left RAF service shortly after it came back from Op Granby. It's a wonderful time capsule, if you like, of an in-service aircraft. And they're so rare, even with the more modern aircraft, it's so rare to go to a museum and see one that looks the way it should. Um, and this aircraft very, very much does. Um, it has been censored. I'm not sure if it was censored by the RAF or by the museum, but the lady on the nose now has... Um, some clothing to cover her modesty which has been added with a sharpie or <laughs> something like it's just been coloured in but as i say the aircraft it's dirty it's it's not as dirty as it would have been clearly because it's not in use it has been you know the filth has been washed off of it um, but you can see all the stains you can see the fingerprints the handprints the boot prints you can see the nose art both sides you can see how it's been applied because it was applied by ground crew using whatever they had to hand um, it's wonderful um, and for that reason alone it's worth building this version because if you're here in the UK and you can get down to Hendon you can get up close and personal with this actual aircraft and you can photograph it to your heart's content and somewhat randomly I do have I can't remember why but I do have a picture of this aircraft from from before it left service. It's at an air show. I think this might have come in a, in a pack of um, a pack up or something. Was it this aircraft? It's definitely got Sky Pirates on the front of it, but this has got a Penguin on the intake as well. But you can see quite clearly a lot of the grubbiness that built upon these things but yeah lovely stuff uh, if um, 
if time and finances allow personally for myself I'd love to get a second kit and, and do it like this for all the reasons I've just stated so that's that lot covered then the last thing to look at is this deco sheet which is immense that's an A4 so it's you know it's, it's, there's a good lot of decalage here standard air fit stuff they're very very thin very thin slightly matte but not matte enough to be an issue really matte decals tend to be a bit a bit grotty to work with there's the uncensored Pauline for you um <laughs> the up ground b is just this little bit <laughs> that's it <laughs> love it um we've got stencils for all the weapons here drill labels for dummy rounds stencils for the rest of the airframe up there including these quite pretty optimistic honestly um, harness decals but very very well done a whole bunch of the instrument panel and side console decals are running along the top there your national markings here and then the other three options the specific markings for those down there interestingly the red the red flag version's also got some vulcan um some vulcan zaps somewhere along with that red star i feel like the majority of these kits are going to get one of these two schemes plonked on them there you go i really haven't had a problem with airfix decals for the longest time i don't know who prints them but they are very good quality they're incredibly well researched as you can clearly see uh, and they generally do exactly what it says on the tin they work exactly the way you want decals to work all right then so to sum up what what a, what a brilliant kit it, it, it looks amazing um i don't really know what to say i'm left slightly speechless which is not common um detail looks lovely the moulding's really, really good. The surface detail's really nice. There's none of the sort of inconsistencies in the depth and style of surface details that we do often see with Airfix kits. Um, there is a little bit. I think the wing sprue in mine is is letting the side down a touch. Uh, the 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 slight. I think my my takeaway with Airfix kits of late. I think that the the design ethos that they have and the way they envision their kits their instructions everything is actually really 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 good it's pretty much right up there with most other manufacturers in my opinion but they do tend to be a little bit let down by the production processes or maybe the quality of the production processes in some cases um i don't know whether it's uh, just down to the plastics that are used I, you do hear a lot of complaints about airfix plastic this is the darker stuff but don't be fooled by the colour, it is still very soft. Just because it's dark grey, it is, it is still quite soft. Um, but on the whole, I think that their packages do represent decent value for money. This kit, I paid $72.50, $72.49, directly off the Airfix website. Uh, I did that because it includes the coin which for the purposes of this build for an X12 squadron engineer makes sense to get the coin. Uh, Jadlam are listing the kit for 62 if I'm not mistaken. Let me Google it quickly. Jadlam are listing it currently for 64.95 um, and other online sellers have, have it for around about the 65 pound mark. Just as a point of interest, the Royal Navy version um, is currently on offer for £50, pounds, 51 on the official Airfix website. And again, there are other online sellers selling the Royal Navy version for around the £50 pound mark. Um, arguably at £72, it's at, it's at the higher end of the scale 
for, for something like this. However, this is a large aircraft, it is very detailed, there is a full weapon loadout and four decal options. Uh, so I don't think it's over the top especially. And at the sort of £65 mark, you're going to get it for online. I think it's perfectly reasonable. Um, I don't think there's any any reason to expect it to be any cheaper than that, frankly. So I'm not going to quibble at it. I think it looks beautiful. Um, very much looking forward to getting on with it, having a crack at it, getting it built. Um, and especially for a Royal Air Force veteran, I think it's going to be a lovely project. And of course, I will bring you along for the ride on that when it happens i'm going to give this a, a an absolute highly recommended i think it looks wonderful um crack on and get one if you need to if, or if you were wondering what was in there and if it was worth the money i very much think it is um as usual thanks everyone for watching thanks for all of your support in all of the ways that you offer it um and i look forward to see seeing you on the build of this kit and with all of that said it only remains for me to say Look after yourselves, look after each other, Gen Genesis out.